Them. No, it's not good enough indeed, and it is all to play for. There is some pressure. The I feel like I, it can go either way. These prize cards might to start to spell out if there's going to be. Oh, I'm not in love with two buddy poffins, but no, considering they can be Arvin searched, I'm also not hurt. Yeah. So here is the win and in. Yes, and uh, both players flipping over their basics, and it looks like it will be Siphon starting. Let's go. I mean, Charizard, does it want to go first? It, it doesn't feel great, no, if I'm I, honest, especially I, this, with the two buddy puffin this, this honestly makes me think that Kim won the won the coin flip and decided yes. to go second because, of course, you want to get that early attack. With that, uh, thank you very much on the Iron Hands EX. And actually, Saifong has a really, really bad start. It's forced to bench the mini on turn one, even though you can't use a supporter. I feel I feel devastated at this stage in the tournament when that sort of play has to happen. But I think that's the that's one of the very few drawbacks of playing Charizard is that if you if you are forced to go second, if your opponent forces you to because they also like going second, or if they're trying to purposely disadvantage you without a buddy pop in, we also obviously know that there are two in the prize cards. It can be really shaky to get started and that can slow you down so very much because not having a Charmander on that turn, it's pretty big. Yeah, it is. No Charmander, no Pidgey either, no no nothing, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And wait, is Saifung thinking he's got the Buddy Poffin ready, but Saifung is going first, right? You can't do anything unless Kim passed very quickly, but I don't think that's what happened. I don't believe that's what happened. I think um, Sai's just kind of sizing up what there might be in the deck, yeah. ready for that Arvin. Uh, obviously, we can't play it yet, but it's uh, worth kind of noting what he can take. It, I don't know. It, it looks like he's opting to play. I, I mean, this is a little bit confusing. Yeah, it might just be... Okay, just taking a look. I was going to say, because uh, we're fairly sure that Sai went first here. And two, so there's two Lost City in hand. I think that's really, really worth mentioning. They're clogging the hand quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, not only... Like, Lost City is not... It's not ideal into no. this. Um, I guess Lost Zoning this Maraiden is the best target, but it's not necessarily the best target for Charizard in the first place, unfortunately. It, it's it's not a matchup where Lost City is the most relevant. You have enough of all of your attackers in the future Iron Hands deck to get by no matter what, basically. So it's not really in there for this at all. And yeah, there we go. Side just after fetching the Arvin from the Luminous Sign does just pass. and. I mean, Kim does not need a lot to take KO here. Oh, you know, that's uh, Maraidon already doing 40 damage. That's a Psychic Energy. If you can get one Iron Crown EX on the bench, you're taking a KO on the Bidoof. But they're going to give Sai a helping hand by taking taking the, the go on the Iono. I, I appreciate why the Iono was necessary here. Uh, Kim's hand was pretty clogged in and of itself. And I think they want to establish more of a mm -hmm. board presence and get those Iron Crowns down, like you say. But honestly, I think they mm -hmm. may have uh, given the Iron Hands uh, a way to there. Yeah, but, but I mean, to be fair, Kim did see that Sai already had an Arvin in hand for the Luminion, so you know that you are getting rid of a guaranteed good card. Maybe this Iono, you, know, you get lucky and you end up breaking Sai again, but Sai did draw quite a few things off of that Iono, so I think it should be good to go as Kim does find the Iron Crown, so can attack with the Maraidon, get the KO, and attach two energies to the Iron Hands EX. A really, really great start for Kim. Oh, Ross's choice is getting, uh, yeah. getting some uh, screen time today mm -hmm. with that Maraidon for Ross's cast to pick and I, I could this could be it this could be us showing it bolstering its way into the top eight peak accelerationing its way into the absolutely. top eight absolutely <laughs> uh, but for now just finding those energy putting them on the relevant Pokemon and then it will be back over to Siphon with Ooh. just a lone Luminion for now. Now, the Luminion needs to come out of the active quite desperately. Three prize cards off Namp, you very much, is not what you want to see when you're going kind of quite heavily, quite fast into the top eight. Yeah, and also given in mind that the way this prize map works is going to be very, very favorable for Kim because there's one prize taken already. So you iron amp you very much your way to three more prizes and then you only have two more to take. It's a really perfect prize map if you can get the amp you very much KO on this Luminion V. It just evens up those prizing, those prize encounters, right? You're always mm. wanting to take kind of two, two, two across when you're against Charizard. But actually taking this the single prize there when you're staring down a Luminion kind of for now, stuck in the active. Not for very long by the looks of that hand, though. It's very unfortunate for both of the main supporting basic two prizes in the format, that being Squawkabilly and Luminion, that both of them are weak to the thing that lets you take free prizes off of them. <laughs> both of them are weak to Lightning. Zambi very much just comes oh. in and wrecks you. 
Thank you very much for that yes. weakness <laughs> typing, because that is incredibly helpful. Definitely going for the Ultra Ball here. Just need to get as many cards on board as possible. I imagine it's going to have to be the Fire Energy. I feel like you want to keep Pidgeot, and you need the Prime Catcher potentially to get the Luminion out of the active, unless you decide to attach Retreat. They've like, gone for keeping the Energy, so it might be an attach Retreat, and kind of keeping the Prime Catcher for a power play later. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is very much a situation of nothing feels great. And in this specific instance as well, Sai has discarded a Pidgeot EX. Very mm -hmm. important to know, the other one is in the prize cards. That's honestly why I thought that it wasn't going to happen. I thought if they've price checked really thoroughly, they might kind of realize this. Of course, we can get it back later. It's all right. Everything's, everything's chill for now. I think my concern here is that uh, currently uh, Saifung does not run Clefa, and this would have been oh. oh, this would have been a nice Clefa turn. I feel like the Rotom in the active is also nice because Iron Hands cannot amp you very much easily. More Iron Crown are going to need to be introduced to yes. buff the damage to give it the um, the Iron Hands up on that one and make sure that they're getting the KO. But then they are taking two prize cards. I don't know whether, but they're going to get two regardless, right? Because otherwise they're just going to amp you very much a Charmander. Yeah, yeah. Basically, nothing here feels great. No discard no. option feels wonderful here. And, and yeah, and I, it's funny because I was just thinking about the Clever, thinking, oh, you kind of just assume that it's going to be in the list now, right? But uh, Yeah, it's common now, but actually I, I can see pros and cons for it. But I feel like just as, okay, so yeah, choosing to just leave the Charmander in the active, not going to risk the Rotom when there's already an Iron Crown in play, but the Iron Crown has been kind of gust forward using the Prime Catcher, which again kind of forces Kim into a situation where they need to find that pivot. But yeah. the deck is quite full of them. Yeah, you got, you got I, I I believe a free or maybe even four future booster energy capsule. Of course, a phenomenal tool that, you know, you have the ancient booster energy capsule that provides a great boon of health to the ancient Pokemon with the 60 extra HP and the protection from special conditions. But then you have the future booster energy capsule gives future Pokemon the ability to do 20 more damage to the opponent's active and retreat for free. I think that's the real key part as well. Being able to have a free retreat cost on a Pokemon that has two or possibly more retreat. When well, you look at future Pokemon, they, they always kind of feel like like they have this really high retreat cost, yeah, right? Iron Hands has four. Right, madness. But that does unlock the ability to use the heavy baton, so we're not mad about it. No, no that is true. It's like it's the silver lining to an otherwise you know, awkward uh, retreat cost. Yeah, four is. It almost feels like in a lot of instances, four is better than three. Three is just like an awkward number to retreat. But there's the, all. It seems like all of the specialized things for high retreat Pokemon are for four retreat Pokemon or more. I feel like three is very awkward. Yeah. And then four, it's like it might as well be as awkward as three. If you're yeah. gonna I have to stretch the three energy. Four doesn't feel that far away, yeah, but then you do get the added benefit of things like heavy baton, exactly. which specifically so, reference it. So key, key moment here: the first electric generator of the game fits one energy. That's a good start. We got one. Lo I love counting our generators. We hit one. Let's see how many generator energy we can get out of this whole game. Let's see whether we can hit uh, an over odds <laughs> amount of energy yeah. or an under odds amount of energy. Yeah. Well, I mean, one is already great because now all you really need is to attach one more to the Iron Hands EX, and then you can, if you can find a pivot for this Iron Crown, amp you very much for you, the next two prizes that you take. But where is that coming from? Is that a professor's research in hand? I can't quite see what the supporters are personally. There it's, is there is a research a research so. Very well, we could get the item car, the tool card off of that. The boss did have to to go into the discard pile, which isn't great yeah. because we are looking at that Luminion as a really beautiful prize equalizer. Yeah, and it is a very interesting choice, actually. Oh, okay, this is very clever. So Kim could have attached manually to the Iron Hands with free energy on it, but opted to attach to the other one instead. What I think Kim is going to do here, if he finds the pivot, he's going <gasps> no! to. Oh, finds no energy there. Oh, that's a sh shame. But actually, I think this is okay. I think Kim's plan here is bearing in mind, if you take two prizes off of this Charmander, suddenly Sai has access to Roxanne. So actually, mm. maybe it's just better to bring in the Maridon and attack with that, take another KO again, and then you can just amp you very much uh, on two uh, lower HP things. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot, Freya. I think we're still struggling with that retreat, though. It looks like it might have just had to have been a pass for turn. Oh. And it looks like Iron Crown, although they may be the king with the crown, <laughs> is stuck yeah. in the active. And, and actually, I'm looking at Sai's hand, and yeah, there was a Roxanne there, so if Kim went for the you know, the potentially greedy KO uh, with the Iron Hands, then yeah, Siphon would have been able to rock Sand and potentially make a comeback. So, a very heads up from Kim. Very, very good. And it gives Saifung the kind of the, the advantage here of being able to make a comeback without feeling so far behind. Charizard loves to make yep. a comeback. It's his favorite thing. 
thing. I mean, having said that, though, Sai actually did just it's like go for the charge. instant charge after evolving into a Charmeleon, oh so still goodness. not really got anything much to work with. Battle of the Bricks. <laughs> Battle of the Bricks, indeed. But uh, well, I mean, keep us in the bricking this off as much, just like kind of missed a turn of tempo, right? But yeah. here with the Techno Radar, I can gra grab another Iron Crown out of the deck. If you can go for the Luminion and put yourself down to two prizes left, that feels pretty good because then it feels like a more worthwhile thing to trigger the Roxanne for. But just um, not, but still needs to find a way to move this Iron Crown out of the active. That's going to be the big issue right now. I feel like because Kim's board is so well established at this point, like you say, I'm not too worried about the fact that they've got to. Um that they, that like, if you say if they get Roxanne, I'm kind of yeah. fine with it. Like, it, it doesn't feel too bad. Two cards is kind of fine. Yeah. Uh, we've used a lot of Ionos, though. That's three now, and it a Professor's is. Research, and a Boss's Orders. Oh, but the key find there from the Iono of Kim finds the Future Booster Energy Capsule so you can retreat this Iron Crown and take the KO. Okay, so we're moving. Yes, we're, we're moving. We're grooving. <laughs> And we're going to get our amp you very much on. Yes, so Cobalt Command going to boost the damage. Not that it's even needed to KO this uh, Charmander, oh, no. to be fair. Oh, but uh, no. but, but uh, Kim taking a Cobalt Commanding lead in this game with this with this move right now. And, I mean, bear in mind, I mean, you can still go for the move we mentioned earlier, maybe just take the KO with the Maridon. But there is a potential map where you go, actually, I am going to bring up the Iron Hands, mm -hmm. take a KO, and then if at any point you can amp you very much in the mini on V you win. That is so true. I suppose the Luminion V just being there is um, kind of a backup plan, but also like staring it down, like mm -hmm. you say, to finish this game out quickly. Uh, the aggressive stance of um, of Iron Hands really comes through. But they have gone for that peak acceleration, just KO yeah. the Charmander, again, staying out of Roxanne range. I love yeah. it. Yeah, this is totally fine as well. You, I mean, Kim didn't know that he literally just iron would away size Roxanne, but you want to play around it regardless, because if you're, you haven't taken enough prizes, then even if they have it, they can't play it. So yeah. definitely heads up there from Kim. He doesn't, he's not in a rush, right? He's, such an, he's in such a lead. This is something that's come up in previous tournaments as well. You don't want to get a little bit greedy when you're already far ahead and give your opponent the a chance to make a comeback. So Kim just playing it smart, playing it safe, and just uh, playing it patient. Interesting hand here. There's not a lot going on at all. I actually oh, think it's going to be another instant charge, if I'm totally honest with you, Freya. We've got a oh, TM Devolution, right. we've got a Boss's Orders, Vacuum, um, Lost City, Pal Pad, Professor Turo scenario, and nothing else. Oh. And I feel like it's exactly what happened last time, but they're going to pull forward an Iron Crown without a future uh, capsule on yeah. so that it can't retreat for free and then just instant charge. Saifung is really struggling to keep the pressure on here because we're not making any effort to get back at the Iron Hands deck where it's just proving rather impossible. Yeah, these Ionos just not get catching Sai any kind of breaks at all. Really unfortunate as now uh, Kim does have the Arvin ready to go, can find the Prime Catcher and the Heavy Baton. So even uh, now the chance for Sai to make a comeback is really dwindling smaller and smaller. Honestly, I really, I, I'm struggling to see a comeback here, but if any deck can do it, it's Charizard right now. That is true. Uh, but just because it can swing so yeah, but, heavily. But, 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 the, but with the Prime Catcher, you can't, there's no way to get a no, Charizard out no, now. No, this is it now. I feel yeah, like yeah, this, is it, it this is. is the game. This is it. There we go. Iron Hands proving that with the power of the King Iron Crown, we are able to take the win even against the fearsome Charizard. Yeah, wow. And that really does show the power of uh, Iron Hands. This is one of those decks where it is the deck in the format almost where you have the least amount of leeway. If you let Iron Hands take a quick lead and capitalize on a slow start, there is it makes it so hard for you to make a comeback because the price tempo is so, so high. And I think that's what I like about the deck, to be honest, is that tempo and that speed. Generally, we praise Charizard for exactly that, but sometimes if you just don't get kind of your foot over the starting line in time, mm -hmm. Iron Hands is so far in the distance already, <laughs> you're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, you can't really do anything. And we saw time and time again in that match, you know, Kim, it was almost like Kim was trying to help Sigh out, you know, not because he, like, he wanted to, but yeah, having to play the Inos stick for his own stuff. But every single time, the Inos still not finding Sigh anything, and Sigh just having to instant charge over and over. So as soon as Kim was able to find the Prime Catcher to bring up the only Charmeleon on the field and no other way to get a Charizard and play, game over. I feel like the two Buddy Buddy Poffins prized really, really stifled that setup because you think, well, okay, there was an Ino, multiple hat turns of hand disruption, and at no point did Sigh find any way to get another Pokemon or any way to get a way to get another Pokemon. So we didn't even have an Arvin for a Nest Ball. There was nothing. Yeah. It was just dead as a doorknob. And I feel like a lot of the techs that Saifung has in their deck are not for this matchup. Like, we've got the technical machine de-evolution. And... Not, not going to be much useful against a basic tech. 
and there's two in there. And then we've got like a Lost City, which is not great because again, we're running really heavy lines of Iron Crown and Iron Hands. The only thing that I do love about the Lost City in this matchup is that if you Lost Zone Iron Crowns, it permanently mm. turns off that damage acceleration and that buff to damage that the future Pokemon are getting. Yeah, that, I guess that, that is true. Although, does it actually make a difference? I don't believe that Kim is playing any kind of recovery card. So if you just KO it, that kind of gets the job done regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in this instance, absolutely, you're so right. Yeah, well, in any case, well, here we are going into game two. Looks like uh, Kim will be going first in this instance. Saifung definitely wanting to go second just so that you can get that Arvin turn one. But the hand doesn't look... Oh, wait, there's an Arvin. Okay, never mind. Oh, we're good. <laughs> we're Finally, saved. we see Arvin. And yeah, just the attached pass from Kim. It's kind of looking like the shoe is on the other foot right now. Uh, he was just... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got nothing to work with, really. Like, he's got switch card and there's a bunch of unplayables. Yep, so nothing really to work with there right now, at least because he couldn't play a supporter. We've got Professor's Research for next turn, but right now it's all in size court where we're going for the Buddy Buddy Poffin and the Forest Seal Stone. What, what I like to call the staple takings of the turn one Arvin for a Charizard player, it's pretty standard to grab those two. If you're looking into playing Charizard soon, I think that's my perfect kind of choice for yep. this turn one and sometimes if you really need that setup acceleration which Saifung might be feeling the pressure of right now after that last game you can then use the Forest Seal Stone to go for another Buddy pop in and go straight with it they've actually changed their mind and going for the Defiance ban probably thinking I can't use this Forest Seal Stone right now yeah uh, very important to just draw a quick attention to the prize cards since we didn't get a chance to do that earlier nothing really too bad for either player the only kind of notable thing Kim does have his one of new EX prize this is something that you might want to use to maybe you know, do a cheeky genome hacking to copy a Burning Darkness for a KO. It's also, of course, a great uh, clutch draw option with that restart ability. So not having access to that is not really ideal, but it's also not the end of the world. Yeah, I think that's one of Kim's deck's weaknesses, right? Card draw, natural card draw. Where is it coming from? It's not coming from any of the Pokemon. So having just the Mew to potentially allow for that is kind of nice. I like that. Yeah, it, although it would be a lot nicer if it was in the deck and not the prize cards. <laughs> that would help. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Anyhow, uh, Sai having a phenomenally better turn one compared to the last game, able to yeah, go second and just fire off that Arvin, which we saw he was forced to do Minion for going first last time. Uh, and uh, that ended up really coming back to bite him because he had to do that to not lose the game. Yeah. But then it also meant that Ultra Ball couldn't then find the Minion for Arvin again, and that just made those Ionos hit even harder. And we've gone for the Heat Tackle! Here we go, Heat 30 Tackle! Damage. And I like this, actually, because it puts the Iron Hands closer to a Charizard KO. It just yes. kind of, especially early game, it's got, what, 200? 130, 230 HP, that's right, I believe. Yeah. So we're not there with 180, but with one single prize knockout, it then pops it in range. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a pretty big deal, especially because it means that, I mean, if Kim can get a two prize knockout with Ampy very much, then it doesn't matter anyway. But say if Kim decides to try and play around that by using arm press to take a KO instead and only take one prize, then it works. Yeah. So you're kind of pressuring Kim into taking the Ampy very much, which yeah. I like because it is forcing the state of play. Yeah. Size going, my charge Hazards don't work properly against this matchup mm. unless I get that slight damage boost for you taking two prize cards. I want you on four prize cards. Okay, a uh, big moment here. First electric generator of the game. Here we are. Drum roll, everybody. We quit, we are quite early on. There's another no! whiff, though. We are under odds. Oh, big time. Two, uh, only one which hit one, and then two which hit zero. That's pretty rough. I mean, Kim is one game up, so maybe you can't complain too much, but still, not what you want to see. No, uh, it's impressive to be one game up when <laughs> the odds have been this low, but mm -hmm. the switch can't enhance I really love for this moment. It kind of feels unfortunate, but that 30 damage from the heat tackle is gone. Yep. And, and very smart as well. You could have switched Carter straight into the ride on, but you had the future boost to energy capsule. So just put that on the iron hands and bring that up so you can then free retreat into whatever you actually want to attack with later because maybe you get lucky and you can you know, power up this iron hands for an ampy very much. You never know. And there's an iron bundle in deck as well. So, Ooh. you know, there's potential for kind of manipulation of the bench. I really can't see the massive mm. benefit in that now, but no. just for future, you just want to leave your options open so that when you play that professor's research, you have every potential of getting something really fun. And oh, okay, this is another very interesting dynamic here. So another reason to attach the future booster energy capsule to the iron hands and not to the Maridon. If the Maridon had the future energy capsule on it, this Char Charmander would now be KO'd. That would then mean that Siphon could potentially be in damage range to KO that damaged Iron Hands EX. So actually, that's very, very clever. Mm. Actually, where the, wait, where'd the 30 damage go? The 30 from? From the Heat Tackle. 
Well, yeah, it got switch cart. Oh, it got switch cart. Oh, my God, I'm saying. Switch oh, my God. Yeah, 30. Yeah, 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 that's why I was saying yeah, it's yeah, gone. Yeah, right, because, yeah, 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 that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's why I was saying that, that switch cart was a really nicely timed card because you go, well, well, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't care about your heat tackle because I, I can pop Iron Hands on a little cart back to the bench yeah. where it's going to be healthy. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think for some reason I thought it was a regular switch instead of a switch cart, but yeah, that makes so much more sense now. So, yeah, getting out the active and getting rid of that setup damage, very, very nice. So, uh, now again with the peak acceleration, you get the energies out of the deck, you've got that Iron Hands almost ready to go, and uh, that Ampy very much is going to be putting in some work. So, Fung once again going for the Luminion here, and then we can go for our second Arvin of the game, going for the Red Candy and the Forest Seal Stone. Again, Forest Seal Stone is going to let us go into the deck and grab any card we need. So, Siphon's guaranteed a Charizard here if that's kind of what he wants, but he's just put Pidgey on the bench. Badoof has been around since last turn. We can be Burrell, and this is really nice. Charizard's in hand, so that's even better. So, we're looking pretty strong here with the Forest Seal Stone. We can still go ahead and evolve this Charizard. I don't know whether he goes for the active or the bench. I was thinking the bench one feels more tempting. I think you need to kind of look at your HP values right now, especially with a deck as scary as Iron Hands. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now, the one saving grace for Kim is that, uh, that, as well as, although Kim wasn't able to take a KO, Psy can't really Evo, or rather, rather can't take a relevant KO. Sure, you can take out, take out this Maridon, but there's not really any extra price shenanigans that Psy can make use of, so this uh, Maridon is essentially a free knockout. At this point, Kim will just not put down any other single prizes and will force uh, Psy to KO free two prizes to win the game. But here comes the Forest Seal Stone. Now, we can't take a counter catcher. Ah, the Beaverell. I was wondering. It's a really nice consistency card in this deck. We don't have the Pidgeot. We don't have the line to the Pidgeot where there's no red candy in hand. So it's kind of just giving himself a a kind of fallback, knowing that Kim has plenty of disruption cards in deck. The, the, the Andre Skubal special. If you want to win, play Beaverell. And uh, we have seen that come to fruition so many times. Oh, massively. A brilliant card. Industrious Incisors allowing you to draw up to five cards in your hand. So we're Industrious Incisoring for one here. Oh, fight the Pidgeot. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm out of the Pidgeot. That's pretty good. We just need a red candy next turn now. And boom, we have a Pidgeot out of Beaverell. Yes. So with the Iron Hands, free energy on it. You only need one more. And then you can, can go for the Ampy very much. And now I do believe that Arvin with this Arvin, you, 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 you generate it. Or you can get the Prime Catcher. Unless, wait. No, it hasn't. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not been used yet. That was last no, game. No, so. there is a Prime Catcher in deck. Um, but it looks like they're going for the Heavy Baton. Okay. Oh, wait. Heavy Baton and the Counter Catcher. Mm, yeah, oh, yeah. I why, like it. why waste your prime catcher when you're behind on prizes and you can just go for the counter catcher? And we know that the energy is in hand already, so this is pretty much perfect from Kim. You attach the extra energy, you put on the heavy baton, you counter catcher. I mean, I guess there's a few different things you could go for here. Probably the Pidgey would be really great, or you could go for the big barrel if you want to take out the draw. Say, yeah. I like the it, yeah. it was searched out so specifically and meticulously with that forest seal stone. It kind of makes you feel like Siphon wasted it. Yeah, it, and it, it was always going to be one of those two because obviously. Obviously, the Pidgeot is also very scary because, or rather the Pidgey, because it can evolve into Pidgeot and then you have the ability to quick search. But the Big Barrel is on the field right now, so take it out whilst you can. Amp you very much. Two prizes for Kim. Oh, wait, nice. no, no, is it an arm press? Yeah, no, you wanted the arm yeah, press instead. Yeah, going the arm press, and we discussed this oh, earlier. Oh, yeah. Great way of kind of keeping those prize cards low. Uh, this way, uh, Charizard cannot KO this Iron Hands yet. 230 yeah. HP. And Charizard is 10 short. Yeah. And we were talking earlier about the prize map, right? This is really clever because, once again, Sai had to bench that Luminion. Oh, so yes. the one free two prize map is open again. KO the Luminion for the last three prizes, KO another two prize. And the order you can do that, it, you might, it might vary. You might think that one makes more sense than the other. But Kim has gone for that knowing that it won't affect his plan to victory. Don't get greedy, kids. <laughs> Don't get greedy. Iron Hands knows best. Yes. Now, Super Rod comes in and going to shuffle back in. That's a Bidoof Bid Barrel line straight away, away, along with one Fire Energy. Wants to make sure you have enough to carry on with this Infernal Rain. We do see the Radiant Charizard in hand. That's going to be very important, especially given that Kim hasn't been able to put down any Iron Crown EX. So Ampy very much will not be taking a KO on this Radiant Charizard anytime soon. It always feels risky. The high retreat cost. Ampy very much can take a KO, but wanting to judge, so mm. not wanting to give up on the opportunity of having the Charizard plus the energy to attach to it right now. Mm -hmm. We've gone ahead and benched it and then in for the judge. We haven't seen judge a lot today. No, we haven't. We haven't seen judge a lot in general ever since Iono came out. Some decks opting to play it, but of course Iono is usually better in the early game and the late game, but some decks still wanting that earlier sort of lower disruption with the judge. 
I don't mind it. I like it in this instance specifically because Kim is holding back on purpose. And so the judge is slightly more impactful than yes, the Iono, which absolutely. would allow Kim more card draw. And Kim's deck doesn't have any natural card draw, as we just discussed. But there goes the Charizard. They're going to just go for it. Go ahead and leave the poor Iron Hands just 10 damage short of a KO. Yeah, 210 damage, uh, 20 away uh, from oh, 20. Yeah, yeah, you're quite to right. But uh, let's see what Kim actually drew off of this judge. And I, I see some purple. I see two Iron Crown EX. Oh, two. Two of them, yeah. Oh, you're quite right. My word. Okay, so that's going to be boosting that damage out quite nicely. There it goes. It's going to be an arm press for 200. 200, leaving Charizard in Ampu very much range. Yes, especially for next given turn. that the, iron, the, two, the double Iron Crown has now hit the bench. Yep, so this Charizard is now amp you very munchable. Yes, which is not a position you want to be in because, I mean, sure, being able, having the Luminion on the bench that can be KO'd with amp you very much, not great. It's even worse when it's your main attacker. <laughs> This is such a shame with the Arvin. I really feel like kind of a Professor Turo's scenario would have been so lovely here, but you know what? Like, they only run one in deck. It's not in prizes, so it is possible. It's just such a shame that they didn't have the Pidgeot in time to be able to search that out. Taking the Iron Hands out with maybe a Heat Tackle instead, just so you're not giving up three prize cards on this Jarzard yeah, would be so much nicer. Yeah, I think you have to, right? Although, I mean, it still leaves you in an awkward spot because it means that the there's still, still so many things that can uh, take a KO and make that prize map so favorable for Kim. We do see the Pidgeot now coming in at long last. It was able to set it up off of that Arvin, but now we'll search for another Rare Candy with that quick search and is it readying that Infernal Rain. I'm going to say it. I think Saifung's in trouble. I think so too. There's a lot of Pokemon in play, all of which either have damage, which is making them liable to Kim's attacks, but also there are lots of Pokemon in play, yeah. which Ampy very much can not only kind of knock out, but will be able to take three prize cards on. Yeah, because in an ordinary scenario against any other deck, this would be fine. You've taken one prize each, but now you're taking two and the race is favorable. And Iron Hands changes everything. You were facing up against something that can take three prizes in one turn and suddenly you're on the back foot again. It is so, so scary to deal with. It seems really harsh. Wait, uh, wait did... Um, yeah, Charizard was retreated onto the bench. The other Charizard yeah. came forward from the bench that was right. the Heat Tackle oh, oh, Charmander. Wait, there was something key that we missed here. There, there was Lost Vacuum that got rid of the Heavy Batons. So yes. that, so that uh, Kim wasn't able to move the energy across. That was very big. Yes, so that was really nice. We've got the um, Future Booster Energy Capsule still on this Iron Hand, so it's yeah. the ideal pivot down to the bench. Kim is in a much stickier situation now because I think they don't have any way of accelerating energy right this second. No, I can't quite see what those cards no, are. Do you know them, Freya? No, no, no. So they were banking on that heavy baton, which was uh, you did get rid of. It does have the counter catcher, so can use Ooh, that to bring in the pitch. And you can just arm press the KO. Go. And we're still happy with the prize race. Yes. Because we're down to three prize cards now. And there's a damaged Charizard on the bench, which will give us three prize cards. There's a Luminion that will give us three prize cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sai won't be able to remove both of those this turn. No. No, absolutely not. And uh, I think the one thing that is a saving grace for Sai is that I do, but with the amount of prizes taken, this Charizard can KO this Iron Hands. And once again, there is no other heavy baton. So Kim is going to be banking on hit, yeah, having a very strong draw hitting, draw hitting electric generators plus prime catcher to finish the game. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Kim needs so much here, but it feels it feels achievable as long as there's some draw in the hand. I'll admit that I didn't check which prize cards were taken, but it wasn't the Arvin or Iono that's still sitting there, which I think Kim was hoping yeah. they might get one of those two to, to give him a hand, really. But Saifung might be able to use this as the pivotal kind of turning point of this game and just start going very aggressive, knowing that Kim doesn't have any draw power or energy on the board now. Yeah, so here we go. Two prizes taken. What does Kim have to work with the two prizes? There is... Oh, there's a Mew. Yes, they thought they that, was, that was the one he took just now. Here so, we yeah. go. Draw for one. Restart what is one. it? It's Prime Catcher! Catcher! No way! So he's oh, going to play that. Yeah, going to bring out the Charizard. Okay, okay. And now it's all on the generators. There's a research in hand as well. That he has a research. research in the radar. Here we go. It, are we going to are we going to high roll or low roll, Freya? I I, mean, I don't know, but we're going to find out right now. Oh, it I is, really want a high roller just because I want to see it happen. It is going to got to be two generators and at least three energies hit okay, to get there. Okay, what we got? What we got? We've got no generators. No. 
you're kidding me? That There's nothing. It's just supporters and two energy. I'm going to cry. That was anticlimactic. That was so... But, 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 there is um, currently this Charizard is stuck in the active, right? Oh, that's right? true. Yes. But it needs two energy to right. retreat, and I'm not seeing anything oh, yeah. in hand that gets that out of the active spot right now. And no, the, there's not. And with the Pidgeot KO, there's no option to quick search either. So very heads up from Kim, knowing that that's a, the was the most important thing to target down. And Sai now having to play a pout pad to try and maybe increase his odds to find something. But yeah, this this is so back and forth. Yes, it First is. the Iron Crown was stuck in the active. Now, mm -hmm. then another Iron Crown. Now a Charizard. Yeah. There's all sorts going on here. Everyone's the, everyone's going very back and forth. Yeah. Like, right, well, I can't attack, so come here. Like, both of these players are doing haymaker turns with the limited resources they have access to. This game has been yeah, absolutely like the most intense sort of roller coaster back and forth you can imagine. As now, even though Sai has a great, great board, there's no draw option. So yeah, this uh, Charizard is now stuck in the active, and that's exactly why that was specifically wow. what Kim picked. Because you know, if you just attach, to, if you just bring up the Luminion instead, they can you can attach one energy and retreat. But the Charizard needs two to attack and two to retreat. So one energy attachment doesn't get you anywhere. The disruption levels in this game <laughs> have been through the roof. Kim also has an Iron O in hand now. They can put Psy, he can put Psy down to one card in hand. Oh. And then Psy might be stuck with this Charizard for even longer if Kim needs to buy time. That, that is really, really huge. So Psy is going to try and play out as much of the hand as possible to mitigate this a little bit. Yeah, there's a TM Devolution that is a completely useless card in this matchup. Get rid of it whilst you can. There is also an Ultra Ball you can play. Actually going to get rid of the Pidgey and the Lost City. We oh, the oh, yeah, right, yeah, of course. oh, thank yeah. goodness. That right. was the only saving grace that we could think of. And again, it kind of makes you iron o proof, right? Yes, it does. Her, her shenanigans aren't working. <laughs> no, not anymore. That was absolutely crucial. So very important that Sai was able to super rod that line back in and uh, uh, just finding the ultra ball, the, the clutch card in the hand to try and find a way to retreat, either retreat with this Charizard or attack because there's only one prize left for Sai. If you can go into this Radiant Charizard and find a way to get another energy on it, although you have just attached that might be a bit tricky. Um, but, but you still, oh, there it is, the Bram Catcher. So you can go, you can go oh, into the Charizard on the bench. there it is. We really, oh my gosh, we've got 19 minutes on the clock. I reckon we're going to see a winner here. And I'm so excited because we've got everything to play for. This is so crucial. It's going down to the wire. This is round 15. <laughs> and we're going into top eight very soon. Saifung finding the, the clutch Prime Catcher off of the industrious incisors to bring up something and bring up its own Charizard EX, take the knockout and move into game three. Wow, this has been a, such a the edge of the seat series. You could say it was the Prime card they needed to yes. solidify the win there. <laughs> and honestly, I think that either of these guys could take it all the way to the finish line. I mean, we kind of, it's been proven already, right? Both of these players are piloting the deck to the maximum ability and here, you know, Kim putting on a haymaker display with uh, future hands and Saifung making the clutch plays and making the comeback in, in that game as well after really having the back against the wall and Kim trying his hardest, but not quite enough. So it's going to be one more game between these two to decide who makes it into top eight. I think that's the struggle, right? Kim, if, we, if we look at the decks in black and white we think okay when we're looking at attackers kim has the advantage but when we look at the deck's consistency levels when you consider disruption charizard is always going to have that one up if you set up a beaverill or a pidgeot or both, or both <laughs> then you're gonna have the consistency that's going to lead you over that finish line when iron hands runs out of steam yeah and it goes back to what you were saying earlier right the uh, the iron hands deck it relies on very limited resources to keep itself inconsistently the the kid that really the key turn that last game of where Sai found a lost vacuum yes, that was to huge. get rid of that heavy baton because that denied Kim a more meaningful attack yes. and then Sai was able to capitalize that on that to win the game from there. I think when your energy is removed from the board entirely when you're playing Iron Hands, that's the moment where you're always going to struggle to bring it back. Yes. Not having any energy in play is horrible and really difficult to deal with, especially when we didn't see those generators. No. The original generators low rolled. <laughs> we only saw one in that game and it missed both energies. Yes. You know, if you're only playing one electric generator in a deck that relies on it and it hits zero, you're probably not going to have a good time. I don't think you're having a great time at all. So unfortunately, in both games, we haven't seen those generators kind of, well, accelerate the deck in the way that it should. Looks like a mulligan here for Kim. No yeah, basics I, I see, there. I see a lot of yellow and not much else. <laughs> no, we see a lot of yellow mm. and that is all. On, on the sleeves and in, in the hand with the energies as well. Absolutely. Very both. on point. Both. <laughs> oh, and a shirt as well. God, Kim, Kim with yellow all the way. We're going. <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> Here Lightning. we are. Okay. And uh, 
And over on Siphon's side, not looking hot either, to be honest. So, what, 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 just a peek, what was in it? Honestly, not a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, uh, that's not great. No, depending no. on what the active is, yes. we've got a Forest Seal Stone, okay. we might be okay, but if that is not a V Pokemon, <laughs> it's not looking fun. I'm not very confident. No. So let's see what Kim can open with here. So I imagine he will choose to go second in this game, given that, you know, we yeah. saw how that was very effective in game one, went second, denied Sai good setup, and was able to really, really take a strong start from there. If Kim manages to go super turbo with this deck and peak acceleration their way into <laughs> a very strong set of generators, there is a chance that with one Pokemon the active, his side doesn't manage to get anything else, that they could just knock out that one active and this yeah. is game over. Yeah, and I tell you what, I like the hand, it's a Maraidon start and a Ooh, bunch of really good trainers. I like a Maraidon start and a bunch of good trainers. Yes. That's nice going second. It is. That's rather sassy. Trainers coming in now, or rather prizes coming in now. A couple Ooh. of lightning engines. Ooh. 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 Not great for your electric generator odds, I would say. Oh, no. No, no but here it is. Oh, you, it's what you're mentioning. It is <gasps> the Luminion star. Oh, I, well, oh not, my last soul. Time was, last time was forced to bench it, but this time it has to, it was, has to just start with it in the active. Oh. You know what? I like it, though. I need, We needed it. Oh, yeah, we, we needed did it for the Forest Seal Stone. Right, yeah, because, of course, now we can, although starting the Luminion isn't we great. Can a, we can get a Buddy Pop, yes. and it's fine. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, that is a dead hand, and this keeps us in the game. So I'm all for the Luminion. It was had to be Rotom or Luminion to stay in this game right now, I think. Yeah, so the, taking a look through and going to decide what is the best route to take, given that, yeah, going first again doesn't feel amazing, but it's got to be a buddy buddy popping, right? It's got to be. We need our buddies, Luminion's lonely. Yeah, I know. It's so, so sad. Um, so I guess here you probably have to go for Double Charmander again because you don't want your only attacking option be to be taken out. As much as you'd love to get both Pidgeot and Charizard EX out, if you're in the situation where you know your opponent can take a very early aggressive KO, you can't afford that. You need to guarantee that at least one Charmander survives. Yeah, we're learning from earlier. We yep. know it, and we know that Arvin's in hand, right? So uh, like next turn, we're okay. There's a rare candy in hand, there's an Arvin. We are A-OK -okay to make Charizard as long as there's no disruption from Kim's side. And even if there is, we still might get it. I feel like you have to go double Charmander here just to secure your place in this game. You want to be able to attack on the kind of right turn. And if Kim goes incredibly aggressive with this stance and starts kind of taking those big knockouts now, and if Siphon doesn't have anything to respond with, then it's it's gonna it's it's not gonna be a very it's gonna be quite an anticlimactic yeah, yeah. journey into our top eight. But I don't think that's gonna happen, chat. I think we're gonna have absolutely loads of fun here, and I'm hoping it's gonna be um, a very exhilarating game between Kim and Siphon. Yeah. There is a more than zero percent chance that we see if you know, depending on what kind of start Kim can get a turn one amp you very much for free prizes on this Luminion V. I which, like a more than 0% <laughs> chance. That's one of my favorites. It's, 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 not, it's more than not impossible. We do see a Lightning Engine there in the hand as well. Loads of Iron Oak. Loads of Iron And an Arvin. So, okay. I, so I guess here, yeah, you go for the Arvin. Yeah, I think especially seeing your opponent's kind of like slow start. Yeah. So maybe you're going to go for the old oh, Heavy Baton, mm -hmm. interesting enough, and the Techno Radar, of course. I like the Techno Radar. This yeah. is a great start. Yes, it is. Do you have, though, any way of drawing more? I don't think so. I think what we're going to see here, given that this Arvin, we're probably just going to see attached to the active and peak acceleration, which is also totally fine. <laughs> I am more than happy with that, yeah. especially considering Kim has, like, three Iono in hand yeah, and, yeah. A, and a Poke Gear. <laughs> There's a potential for four supporters there. Uh, Kim, knowing that this deck thrives off of those, if they used one of the, like, three I don't know now the other two are going to the bottom of the deck and you're gonna kind of stop your own setup in this game it is not possible it is not good and it's better to use it as a techno radar discard to be honest yeah so what one game discarded uh, still two more in the hand to work with but gonna go straight away for that double iron hands ex gonna be able to use peak acceleration on the Maridon to start powering one of them up and start to you know, get get the energy rolling and again you don't have to necessarily take a turn one knockout i was saying oh it'd be really fun if that happens but you don't really need to here you're not in a that mega mega rush it's just nice if you can do it yeah this is certainly some peak gameplay from both of these players but primarily kim using peak acceleration yeah. oh, oh, getting wait. that energy into play is important because then what we want to do is keep uh, all of it churning um you're gonna have to stop myself there actually didn't opt to attach to the maraidon attaching to the bench instead 
So going to ah. just go B, maybe Future Boost Energy Capsule and then, yeah, Heavy Baton and pass. I guess maybe thinking the damage on the Luminion isn't that relevant. You're already taking one-hit knockout with the uh, MP very much anyway, so I'd rather just power up on the uh, Iron Hands instead. But, I mean, surely it would have been better to just attach the Maridon so then you can do peak acceleration and get more energy out. But maybe, maybe that was a mistake? <laughs> I, I feel like it may have been an oversight. Mm -hmm. This is a very long day. It They're is. on stream. There's a lot of pressure. We may be wrong. We are no Iron Hands experts. So no. if any, uh, any certified Iron Hands experts out there have something to say to us, uh, hashtag play Pokemon is <laughs> the way to, way to go. Uh, let us know. Uh, let us know your opinions. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, like, I, I don't know. I feel like getting as much energy into play as soon as possible for Kim is always the way to go because of that limited card draw and because of, you know, the, the fact that generators can fail, yeah. I think getting as much energy in play so you can circulate it as soon as possible yeah. is the best game plan. But moving very swiftly on to Saifung's turn, because we've got a lot going on for it. Yeah, we do. There's a rare candy for the, the, the Charizard Infernal Rain coming in. Again, won't be able to take a knockout, but can start putting some damage in at the very least. It's, yeah, I, I, I don't know. There's, like, because... I would understand the worry, just going on a bit more of a macro level here. I would understand if the worry was, was taking a prize to make uh, make it so that Saifung would do more damage with the Charizard, but that was never happening. You were just going to do 60 damage and put some more energy on. So, oh, but does it a generator for turn? <gasps> oh, okay, here we go for a low roll, high roll. Yeah, so electric How generator. How many are we going to get? Oh, I mean, the odds are not amazing. As we know, there's free energy in the prize Come cards. On, so, five off the top. How many does Kim hit? Two. 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 Uh, at long last. That's what we want to see. Hi. <laughs> roll for game three. Yeah. So it is a little bit awkward now that because uh, Kim last turn opted to put the future booster energy capsule on the Maridon and then retreated into the Iron Hands with no energy on it. So now we'll need another future booster energy capsule to retreat it. But if you can get that, then that means that essentially this has been a great damage absorber. Yeah, you're quite right. Mm. It's absolutely done its job in that regard, yeah. right? So as long as we're able to bring this back to the bench, then we can bring back this game. Oh, I'll tell you what, Arvin will be very, very good here because I could search you future booster Ooh. and it could search you the another item to maybe get the last energy you need you could go another generator or, or a techno radar of course yeah for the iron crown of oh, you cheeky little thing <laughs> oh Oh, that was nicely timed. Yes, it's a, it's that. Uh, oh, I do believe that's again Italian oven. That is a uh, Pepe. There's oh, pe sorry, Pepe, Pepe <laughs> you cheeky little thing. Yes. <laughs> so, future boost energy capsule, techno radar. Get your bench set up, and we know that the Ino is already in hand as well. So next turn, you know you have your draw two. It's a really, really, really great turn. Love that. Kind of everything you need right now. We have limited card draw. Utilizing Arvin at this stage is better than kind of using our Ino's. Where actually we want to kind of save those until we're at a stage of the game where where we are also disrupting Saifung's hand, whereas at the moment you want to be just going into the deck, searching out exactly the couple of cards you need yeah, and, you and making what, it work. And you, and you know what feels really good here, honestly? You just just retreat and go for arm press. You're doing, what, 160, maybe more if this uh, Techno Raider gets played? Yeah, using arm press to set up and you very much is a really nice little combo. But yeah, just say, uh, it, well, it, well, it's, it's arm press into the MP very much uh, for the setup. So, yeah, Arvin gets played now. Going to bring the Techno Radar to hand and attach the Future Boost to Energy Capture. And actually, no, you know what? Just going to go into the Maridon, and now you're going to go for the Peak Acceleration. That works now too. Now we see it, and I like it. I'm going to be honest with you. I like this. We're finally getting that yeah. energy in play. Iron Hands is bulky on the bench, kind of ready. The other one's got a little bit of damage yeah. on it, but, I mean, Charizard is always going to be two hit KOing yeah. an Iron Hands. And I think the problem here was more around the fact that you wanted to get the Techno Radar, but there was nothing great to discard. You would have to either, either discard the Future Boost to Energy Capital you just got, or the Iron O, neither of which feels great. So I think that's why Kim played the Arvin to get to, but then just went for the Future Boost to Energy to retreat, and then attacking with the Maridon. It makes a lot of sense. It does. It does honestly make a lot of sense, and we can see that line of play clearly now. Saifung in a bit of a sticky situation with just a single Charmander Luminion and a damaged Charizard now, and that Charizard is going to be taking a little, little, little bomb yeah, a little bit bumped for 60 damage. I mean, I do think now with maybe with enough Iron Crown out, you could possibly go get a KO with Arm Press uh, on the Charizard DX. I'm not sure if it's quite enough uh, with the, depending on how many future boost energies and 
Iron Crown you can get out. But going back to Siphunk's turn, we do see another Arvin, so can now maybe get another Buddy Buddy Puffin, try to get down that bit doof and that Pidgey. We saw that, you know, the Bavaro was such a key to clutch that last game. That, these are the consist consistency options that you want to make sure that your, your opponent's disruption doesn't affect you. We need a little picnic on the bench. Come on, guys. We need the Buddy Buddy Poffins. Then there will be plenty of buddies <laughs> to back us up. At the moment, we've not got enough. Luminion and Charmander need a bit of backup. Yeah, you can't be going at it all by themselves. Buddy Buddy Poffin, the first choice. I'm not sure how many tools there are even left in the deck. There is a... I'm not sure there are any, to be honest, Freya. Wait a minute. There, oh, the, no, we got the Defiance Band. Yeah, yeah, okay, because the Forest Heal Stone's been used, so I think, yeah, Defiance Band is literally the only other tool that could have been fetched. Incredible. Well, okay, other than the TM Depth Devolution, but we did just see two of those get Ultra Balled away earlier. Yeah, not useful in this matchup as we deduced earlier. Yeah. So definitely worth getting rid of with the Ultra Ball. The Ultra Ball can just kind of, it's almost like using an Ultra Ball for free. Yeah, a little bit in this matchup at least. So Buddy Buddy Puffin does finally get down that Pidgey and that Bidoof. We're all ready to go and evolve on the next turn. Uh, and I guess now in the meantime, you just announce Burning Darkness, take a KO. It, again, it's not great for the prize map, but you got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. And even then, taking the Maraiden out of play isn't a bad thing. We don't want to leave it open to be able to use uh, PK acceleration later to then drag more energy into play because if you do manage to sort of use a vacuum to get rid of an, uh, a heavy baton then if the Maraiden is still lurking around there is potential that's used to bring him back into the game so I don't dislike taking it out now. I mm -hmm. think it's actually kind of progressive towards the the end of game state. Yeah. Very interesting that it came actually, so playing that Techno Radar drew a Iron Crown for turn and then uh, had to dis discard it for Techno Radar but actually opting to get two more Iron Hands EX, not opting to get any Iron Crown at all. What do you think the logic is here? Maybe we're thinking about the batons here and what oh. Pokemon are going to be able to stay in play. I, I feel like, again, just remembering what happened last game, I don't think that Kim wants to be punished similarly. I think we need to have multiple baton on because then you can only uh, vacuum one of them. Yeah, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. And here we go, another, another electric generator. The first Pyrolo. one hit very well for Kim. It's going to be just one this time. I'll take it. Yeah. It's a mid. It's a I mid. Think, I think on the whole, on average, the electric, gener electric generators have been a lot better for Kim in this game. Yes, we've been high rolling it in this game. <laughs> So far, and yeah. I hope oh, it continues. Another one. Woo, let's keep going. Number three in Baby, this game. Let's go. Five cards. Let's have a look. Let's see. And that's going to be one again. Whoa. We're doing good. We're high rolling. We're rolling, baby. We're I feel like these generators have been charged up real nice before this game. Are we high rolling or are we just rolling? Because it's like you know, two one and one. I guess that, that's like... I like two one and one. I feel like that's high rolling. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's certainly more than fair. I think Kim will be pretty content with that. And I think that that worry of potentially Saifeng being able to get rid of all that energy in play probably is, uh, is lessening now. Kim's probably feeling a little better mm. about this situation. But I think knowing what attack to use right now, that's the hard part. Yeah, because uh, I mean, there's a part of me that wonders if Kim is almost gesturing as if thinking about passing, but I don't really see the benefit of doing that here. Yeah, no, we're going to go for the retreat and going to go into that future booster energy capsule uh, Iron Hands that just had the one attached, and yeah, just going to go for the arm press. For the arm press. It's such a shame that this can take three <laughs> hits to take out this Charizard, and even then Saifang may, having not revealed the Professor Turo scenario last game, be able to kind of maybe swing that upon Kim. Maybe Kim's not sure if that's going to be possible or not. But that's I do true. think this was all really Kim could do. Yeah, but now you can do the game plan we were talking about last time. I'm very much on this for a KO, finish off on the Minion. Absolutely. So, and so the prize map is still there. Yeah, and so because of that, it's going to be very, very crucial here for Siphon to find, as you mentioned, that Professor Turo scenario. Just pick up that Charizard, undo all that two turns of damage and hard work, and make it so that Kim's prize map is much less easy. That'd be such a shame. But it is possible. I'm trying to look at the hands as a boss there. I thought it might have been Turo, but it's not. It's a boss, no, no. a lost city. Oh, dear. That's looking a bit dead. As a judge. Yeah, yeah. the problem is there's a bunch of cards you can't play, right? You can draw up a barrel, but not if you want to play a scenario. So, okay. Gonna going go for, for the aggressive yes. stance. I like this, especially because we can still be barrel for three. Yes. So, so right, Freya. Yeah, so we, in this instance, knowing that the hitting, hitting the Turo is unlikely, going to do the next best thing, which is just to take another two prizes. But now there is the potential for the prize map to go Kim's way here because Sai takes two more. That's free. Three, but Kim can go three, so I can only take two more, and then Kim can go another. I'm very much for the game. Yeah, Kim's not only going to even this out, they're going to jump 
forward in the prize yes. race very quickly here. Matching Sai Fung's three prize cards momentarily. It's only going to take one attach for turn. There it is in hand, straight away off that professor's research. This is a lovely hand, apart from the fact we've got no iron crowns. Yep, but wait, no iron crown, but that doesn't matter. You can just retreat into the other one and go ampy very much with the KO. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't matter if we have no iron crowns. I'm just thinking for future yeah, turns. Right, that makes sense. We don't have the access to those still, and it's surprising that we haven't seen any of them so far. No, yeah, it's. Uh, I guess you haven't really needed it, right? I think Kim has recognized that you know doing these two shots with your arm press into Ampy very much, that's all mm -hmm. you kind of really need. I think the Iron Crown's a bit of a liability against Charizard sometimes as well because of the weakness. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess uh, that, that does come into it as well. So because obviously being weak to dark, you know, the Burning Darkness can come in and take an easy KO. That's I, I can't believe didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's almost certainly why Kim has opted to not bench as many as possible. Yeah, probably that just because. Stall. Yeah, at, at the beginning of the game when you're you're doing your best to limit how much damage Charizard can actually pump out. If you're going to give them a free two prize cards, that's not great. Whereas if you keep the Iron Hands just alone in play in the beginning, especially when very few prize cards have been taken, Charizard actually cannot one-hit KO an Iron Hand, so you're not going to see that return KO. And it's okay to three-hit KO a Charizard. <laughs> yeah. and, and now the prize up is perfect, right? You, you go for the free prizes now with the MP very much, sure. Now Sai can rock sand, sure. Now you can return KO with Burning Darkness, but you also have another Iron Hands ready to go and all you need is one gusting card to bring up Luminion V and win the game. This is so balanced. I really don't know who's going to win this, Raya. Yeah, it's going to be... OK, we, we were talking about the Professor Tura scenario last turn. Now will be a really, really good time to find it, because if you can get it and use it to pick up that Luminion, you deny that easy win potential for Kim. I would love that, because otherwise, if Kim has a gust in hand, which he does, <laughs> yeah. um, it's a secret between you and me. Yeah. Um, and, 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 uh, you, yeah, the two of us and the viewers at home, of course. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I was talking about. I want to talk about you for a <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, then. I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, but just, yeah, I'll, no, absolutely. I'll just leave the desk in that case. Uh, no, please, please don't leave me alone. I don't want to be like the lonely minion on bench. <laughs> Very understandable. <laughs> but oh. no, going back to the game, honestly, um, is looking like a situation where Siphon can really do with that right now. I think they're just consulting kind of what's left. Oh, it's, my goodness. Well, I mean, as we mentioned earlier, the Professor Tura scenario is in the deck. It's not been used yet. It's not in the prize card, so you do have access to it, but it's going to be so hard to find. You have to, you've got the right handed Charizard at the very least. You also have a Radiant Charizard. That I could like be, that. Yeah. That could be utilized really well here as a single prizer. Yeah. But yeah, wait, retreating it, into it? It, it but retreating into it, but if you retreat and... I think it, that's okay. You evolve into the Charizard, well, load up the Radiant. It's only okay if you have hand disruption. Okay, there is a judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so rare candy into the Charizard EX, Infernal Rain coming in can be able to accelerate to this Radiant Charizard so you can take the KO. Because of the excited heart ability, of course, Kim has taken free prize cards. That's free, less uh, uh, attack cost uh, on the Radiant Charizard, so you only need two energy to do this Combustion Blast. So you're going to play that down and then go for the Judge after playing down this Lost City, I imagine. Yeah, three fewer energy is huge. Uh, I think that's a really good space in the game to be playing this mm. because, again, like unless Kim manages to get um, a boss's orders, they're going to all back with that prime catcher. Yeah. Then they are going to be a little bit stuck and aren't going to just kind of instant win this game. I feel like using that judge at this point instead of Professor Turo is almost second best. There is another problem, though. So by taking this KO, it means that the two Ooh. counter catchers that Kim plays are auto out which is not a great feeling. Oh, I don't like that. No, you're quite right. Unfortunately, we didn't get much off the Bibarel either, so it does look like it's going to have to be a judge play for uh, Professor Turo scenario. <laughs> yeah. Not available. Didn't get it. No. So we are judging. And I don't hate that because obviously no. we know that Kim's hand was pretty mm, nice. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm sure Sai there would have loved to find, uh, found either Professor Turo scenario or Roxanne, of course. That would have been a much more effective Ooh, disruption in this Roxanne scenario. Roxanne would have been lovely with dead on three prize cards. Yeah. But instead, both players are going to shuffle the hand of the deck and draw yeah. four cards each, which you know, is is almost as effective as an INO yeah. at this stage. Okay, this is crucial. We are getting to the end of the game anyway, but it's important to note that time has been called. So. Oh my uh, gosh, it went so quick. Yeah, yeah, no, we just went in a flash, right? But uh, I think I don't think this game is going to end without a victor. I think either one of these players can take their last three prize cards, but it's going to come down now to these last three turns of time to determine who is going to win a mate top eight. What? Where did that time go? <laughs> I'm genuinely, I've been enjoying myself so much. <laughs> <laughs> that I totally didn't see that. That went so rapidly. I feel like we have we have 20 minutes on game three. Yeah, we were too it's invested. Been, it's not been 20 minutes. 
Yes. Two, yeah, two invested in the action, but now it's, it, this judge is going to be the key here. Four cards drawn for Kim, four cards drawn for, for Sai. What do they both find? They want, I really want to take a look at Kim's oh, hand I here. Oh, I can't wait to see wait, Kim's hand. Wait, he's not showing us! Kim, how can you do dirty like that? <laughs> no. Oh, Kim knows how to keep the tension going. Oh, oh. He didn't even look at them. Showmanship. I know, I know. Showmanship, honestly. He's slow rolling himself <laughs> and uh, keeping us all in the dark to know whether he's going to be making his way into top eight by taking these ah. last three prize cards. But oh, I love the drama. <laughs> so, Radiant Charizard. Oh. Oh, he just put them together! <laughs> Come on, Kim! Don't tease me like that. Unbelievable. But, but uh, Sai, uh, Sai's hand is also not great. Not really anything there to do. There's a bunch of Pokemon you can't play. Okay, so here it is. Out. Yep. Combustion Blast. The Heavy Baton gets triggered. And we're going to yeah move the energy across. Oh, What's in the hand? Oh, Mew, it's Mew, Iono, and two energy, I think. Yeah, Mew, Iono, and two energy. Okay, oh. so it's not the guaranteed win yet. There's Professor's Research, research though. <gasps> so, okay, okay, attach. You have a lot of dig here. So you either Counter Catcher, here we go. Or, Counter -catcher or Prime Catcher will win the game for Kim oh, here. That's a lot of cards. Seven cards of the research. Does he find board. it? He gets the prime catcher! Oh, he got the prime catcher for game! The, oh, the fist bump seals it. Kim is going forward. Ross is going to be jumping out of his seat for this one as Kim moves on into a 